a government document from 2011, was recently released to the public. This document contends the key to interstellar travel may be trapped in the center of the moon. And there's a plan to get it. Blast a tunnel with nuclear bombs. It sounds like something a Marvel villain might do. But this is real, and backed by peer-reviewed science. The document was produced by the Advanced Aerospace Weapon System Applications Program that was ostensibly created to determine the likelihood of our adversaries achieving technology breakthroughs in the next 50 years. To that end, experts in various fields were approached and asked to write papers on the future state of their fields. As Hal Putoff, the person in charge of this part of OSAP, put it. I just simply went out to people and said, uh, uh, I'm doing uh, a survey. Where were your particular application or your particular interest in your particular technologies be in the year 2050 uh, as, as far as aerospace uh, industry went? Friedwatt Winterberg, a renowned theoretical physicist specializing in nuclear fusion, plasmoids, and space travel, was one of those approached by Putoff. Winterberg agreed to give his take, and it reads like he was very eager to do so. The paper returned to Putoff begins with a concise and captivating autobiographical preface. He explains that at 10 years old, back in 1939, he read a book detailing how space travel via rocket propulsion was possible, stoking in him a lifelong interest. But as rockets finally made their way to the moon 30 years later, Winterberg was already thinking about the next generation of spaceships seeing opportunity in his other passion, nuclear energy. Nuclear-powered craft were not new at the time. Project Orion had looked into using nuclear bombs to propel a ship forward. But the world had learned through tests like Starfish Prime that nuclear explosions in our atmosphere create destructive electromagnetic pulses, not to mention dangerous nuclear fallout. The Partial Test Ban Treaty of 1963 banned tests of nuclear explosions in the atmosphere and outer space, which ended Project Orion and research into similar nuclear pulse-powered craft. But Winterberg thought to avoid the negative aspects of nuclear propulsion by using very small, controlled, clean explosions, ones that would not spew the dirty fallout banned by the 1963 treaty. He outlined his idea in his 1971 paper, Rocket Propulsion by Thermal Nuclear Microbombs Ignited with Intense Relativistic Electron Beams. The concept is essentially a craft powered by a fusion reactor, where small pellets of hydrogen and helium isotopes are consecutively fed into the reactor, where an electron beam heats a tiny portion of that fuel to incredible temperatures leading to a chain reaction of atoms fusing together. And although we still haven't been able to create fusion reactors with a positive net energy output here on Earth, Winterberg explains that on a craft moving through the vacuum of space, you could create magnetic reflectors to efficiently capture and store the required energy for the next pellet from the explosion of the last. His idea received attention and spacecraft using such propulsion were studied, but it never got the funding and engineering resources required to bring it to life. His 2010 paper for OSAP was his second chance to pitch his case for nuclear space travel, and he makes a compelling case. Fuel for such an engine is abundant throughout the galaxy. The byproducts are benign isotopes of hydrogen and helium. Such a craft would allow us to explore the solar system in timescales suitable for manned travel, reaching the edges of the solar system in about a year, and putting our closest stars within grasp. It's a remarkable vision, but it wasn't quite what Putoff was looking for. OSAP wasn't really just trying to project the future state of technology. This program was absolutely directed toward trying to address and solve to the best of our ability, quote, the UFO program problem. 
they were trying to explain the flight characteristics of UFOs the government had observed. Unknown objects, such as the Tic Tac observed around the Nimitz in 2004. Objects that seem to defy known physics. We get a hint that Winterberg knew Putoff was looking for more. In fact, Winterberg didn't really even deliver on the ask of projecting future technological breakthroughs. In his introduction, he states that these fusion-powered craft could be engineered with the present state of technology. He even pushes back on the notion that further breakthroughs are possible, writing in the preface, We have little reason to expect that new fundamental laws of physics that could lead to a breakthrough in propulsion still await discovery. Very much as America was discovered only once, it is quite possible that all the fundamental laws of physics relevant to propulsion have been discovered. But under a year later, Winterberg would author another paper for Putoff and Alsap. The premise of that paper seems to undercut the pessimistic view of physics breakthroughs that he voiced a year prior. It's titled Negative Mass Propulsion. In it, he examines the fringe idea of negative mass. Such a substance would push back if you pushed it. It would also exert a negative gravitational pull. If you took a hunk of normal mass and placed it next to a hunk of negative mass, barring other gravitational forces, the positive mass would chase the negative mass, continuously accelerating until reaching light speed. One could see why such a material would be of interest in explaining UFOs. Winterberg goes through pages of complex calculations and theories and concludes that nothing precludes negative mass from existing in our universe, but untethered chunks of pure negative mass would already have zipped off and accumulated far from us. Thus, he believes we will likely never create engines powered by negative mass. But Winterberg thinks there may be yet another form of matter, one where negative masses are intertwined with positive mass ending up with a near-zero-point mass. Such a substance might have the strength of steel, but be practically weightless. A game-changer for aeronautics. And if such a substance exists, Winterberg knows where to find it. The center of the moon. It would exist at the center of Earth as well. In fact, any sizable gravity well would trap this material, according to Winterberg. But while boring a tunnel to the center of the Earth is an insurmountable engineering challenge, Winterberg has a plan to reach the moon's core. In fact, Winterberg had long dreamt of blasting a hole in the moon with nuclear bombs. He wrote a paper back in 2002 on the topic titled Making a Tunnel Through the Moon. In it, he detailed every technical obstacle, as well as the solution and the megatonnage and number of required nuclear bombs. Back then, he wanted to blast the tunnel just because we could. Now, he's found a reason. As far as reasons to blow a hole to the center of the moon go, it's a pretty good one. There's a chance we'll find exotic, nearly weightless material there material that we could use to build craft unlike anything we could imagine. Craft not bound by the laws of inertia. In this paper, Winterberg never gives us a clear sense of what he thinks that chance might be, but he makes a good case that it is not zero. Judging from his previous pessimism regarding breakthrough physics, I would guess he thinks the odds of such exotic matter existing are low but his pessimistic statement was about propulsion breakthroughs. This would be a physics discovery that had propulsion implications. Splitting hairs, perhaps, but this does not seem to be a joke or Winterberg simply indulging Putoff. Winterberg submitted this paper to the peer-reviewed journal of the British Interplanetary Society, where it was reviewed and published. The science is real and relevant to Winterberg's recent work in theoretical physics. That was part of the deal, after all. The authors of the papers requisitioned by Putoff retained the right to publish and use what they create. 
The fact that they were created at the behest of and funded by the government, however, remained secret until recently. It's unclear what sort of influence this paper had on OSAP or the government as a whole. Both of Winterberg's papers, along with the 36 from other authors, were published to a United States intelligence repository listed as unclassified for official use only. There, they were accessible to nearly all defense personnel, where apparently they attracted a lot of attention. As Putoff puts it, Our 38 papers turned out to be the hit bonanza. I'm not sure whether I hope that this paper spawned secret plans to nuke a tunnel into the moon or not, but even if the theory is never directly tested, it does offer insight into what alien UFO technology could be based on. Should anyone recover a piece of weightless debris from a UFO, we'll know to look around the interstellar neighborhood for a corked out moon. So go out, look up, and enjoy the unmarred moon while you still can. I'll be covering other OSAP reports and science developments here, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Rather Be Squidding, Hope to see you next time.